What do Arabic weavers, old-timey sailors, and Coachella fashion have in common? This isn't a riddle you need to tie yourself into knots over. Throughout history and all around the world, macrame has been a popular art form and pastime for everyone from nuns and ladies-in-waiting to sailors and hippies. But how can something as simple as a bundle of rope or thread and a few basic knots be reimagined in so many different ways? Join us as we untangle the fascinating history of macrame. Knots have been around for about as long as we have, and decorative knot tying can be traced back as far as the third century to the Chinese Panchang knot. But most experts believe that macrame began in the 13th century, with Arabic weavers tying excess thread to create decorative fringes along the edges of fabric, a tradition that you can still see reflected today in woven textiles like Turkish towels. With the Moorish occupation of Spain, this Arabic tradition was carried to Europe through Spain and then France, with the wives and servants of crusaders also helping to carry this craft from the Middle East to Europe, especially to Italy in places like Genoa. Recognizing how easily it could be made, European nuns, who were experts in needlework and lace making, began developing new macrame techniques using finer materials rather than thick wool to create beautiful knotted lace made as separate decorative panels that could be added to clothes or linens. You can see examples of their work in vestments and religious paintings, like in the tablecloth seen in this one and this one. By the Renaissance, women from all walks of life were using punto grupo, which translates as knotted lace. And in the 17th century, Mary II introduced it to the English court, where biographers and satirists noted her obsession with knotting threads, a technique that she taught to her ladies-in-waiting. But women and the church weren't the only ones responsible for popularizing macrame or finding new ways to use it. For centuries, sailors had used rope and their practical knot-making knowledge needed for a life at sea to make hammocks and other decorative objects as a way to ease boredom and create things that they could barter with once on land, carrying macrame to ports all around the globe. Sometimes called square knotting, fancy work, or McNamara's lace, sailors didn't just trade macrame objects, but also knowledge, exchanging knot tying techniques and experimenting with new ways to manipulate a humble material into something much more. In the late 19th century, macrame went through another boom, this time in the Victorian home. Pairing perfectly with the era's highly decorated interiors and social expectations that middle-class women practice handiwork, macrame became an important part of domestic life. Beyond its beautiful results, the technique, with its repetition of just a few basic knots, was much easier to learn compared to other types of needlework, making it a handicraft that women could easily practice and express themselves with. Publications like Sylvia's Book of Macrame Lace in 1890 helped even more women take knot tying into their own hands, creating macrame for everything from umbrellas and bags to clothing and curtains. Macrame's popularity eventually faded as tastes shifted, more women entered the workforce, and wartime shortages prioritized practical crafts such as sewing and knitting. When macrame mania returned, it would be less domestic and much more radical, popularized by the love children of the late 60s who rejected industrialism and built a counterculture movement that pushed back against the establishment. Creating handmade crafts became a way to rebel against capitalism, and macrame became a canvas through which hippies could express these radical sentiments. These weren't their grandparents' delicate doilies. Macrame was now bold, loud, and in more places than ever before, proving once again just how versatile the technique could really be. Though the over-the-top aesthetic of the 70s and its many, many macrame animal wall hangings eventually went out of style, macrame never fully has. Today, macrame tapestries and plant hangers are especially popular in interior design, giving a modern and friendly touch to the enviable images you see everywhere on Instagram. In an age of constant digital connection, many people now treat macrame as a form of meditation, using the same basic knots pioneered by Arabic weavers, sailors, queens, and hippies to create everything from boho chic clothing and handbags to ultra-modern jewelry and home decor. 
And because all you need is rope and your own hands, it's never been easier to discover new ways to add your own twist on this centuries-old tradition. 